Have you ever noticed that the things you want to do, you do more often? Duh! <laughs> Gee, I wonder where that came from. But I know that most of the time, if you're like most people, the whole idea of having like a devotion or having a quiet time in the morning of all places is probably the most absurd, ridiculous idea you could think of because, man, we gotta get going. You gotta wake up and rev the engines and fire up, you know, the car and get everything warmed up and ready to go and shoot off the neurons in the brain and make everything like, go, 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 win, 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 conquer, conquer, conquer. And yet, did you know that one of the most beautiful things you can do, seriously, if you ever want to try it sometime, take on your vacation because you can't do it otherwise. Or if you have a free weekend or something where you have some time, try to do it ahead of time, but go camping or something and then go someplace where you could watch the sunrise and see if you can be there for when it turns from dark to light to lighter to suddenly that one moment when the sun comes rushing over all of the earth and it just comes from the horizon and just casts its light all across the land and then look for darkness look and see if you can see anything dark because you see when the sun rises, the only thing that can be dark is if something's blocking the light. And I think a lot of times we don't realize that God will bring the sunshine, irregardless of what may be blocking the light. And in our day, a lot of things that we throw up in front of God really block the light more than they actually do us any benefit. So when we're in a hurry, or when we're anxious, or when we feel like we got to get going, and we really don't want to sit down and take a moment to watch the sunrise, or to get up earlier than when we need to get ready for work, we don't want to be a sunrise of God, Him, Himself, talking to us, then I think we're putting something in the way of the sunrise and the light blocking it. And we miss out on something special, something unique, something different that maybe God might say to you. You see, the beauty of my God is that I haven't a clue when I walk out here what he's going to say. I don't pick up a book and say, Oh, I'm going to look ahead and find out what God's going to do. I don't... Well, maybe sometimes I do. You know, I'm like, Hey, well, Lord, what are you going to do tomorrow? No. <laughs> but I have no idea what the Lord may share with me and you as we go through these devotionals. I don't anticipate or prepare or get ready for, Oh, you know, we got to have these notes, you know. <laughs> we got to get everything in our minds straight now. But... God, by His Holy Spirit, causes whatever it is that fits in your world, as well as in the mind, to be spoken so that we would be bound together as a knit, woven, the woof and the weave together, becoming one tapestry that God has designed for our life today as we look at the devotional. So, you can run off, you know, and be busy, or you could take a moment, you know, to sit still, to be still to maybe watch a video like this one or maybe go off and read your Bible or ask God to speak to you in a different way because to be honest he could speak to a donkey then he could probably speak through me or even you in God calling harvest my Lord we seek thy blessing I love to pour my blessing down in rich in choicest measure but like the seed sowing, 
the ground must be the ground must be prepared before the seed is dropped in. Yours is to prepare the soil, mine to drop the seed blessing into the prepared soil. Together we share in and joy in the harvest. Spend more time in soil preparing. Prayer fertilizes soil. There is much to do in preparation. Whenever we use analogies or similes or metaphors, huh? <laughs> in other words, whenever we compare one thing with another to see what it's like, like saying that we are plantings of the Lord, but the Bible does call us plantings of the Lord, or we say that a simile is similar to something like we say that the sun, S-U-N, is like the sun, S-O-N, of righteousness who rises with healings in his wings because the sun, S-U-N, when it rises, does cause healing into plants and into growth and into the things around us. So those are like comparative pictures that give us an idea of what's going on. Or like when God chooses to use something in your life, it's a picture of his love for you. Now, his picture, kind of like art, you know, it all depends on how you look at it. I mean, there's Picasso, and then there's realism. <laughs> there's modern art, and then there's actual art. So, depending upon your skew and your focus, the picture that you look at may be customized in order to fit your circumstances so that when you see it, maybe someone else doesn't see it quite the way you do. Maybe, you know, that Picasso isn't quite so pick of the litter that you want and that you might choose some other little mongrel pup <laughs> instead of that big husky dog over here. But God uses the mongrel and the husky, the Picasso and the modern art and all of art in order to make a picture of himself to reveal to you as it fits you or me in causing us to see who he is. Because that's the way that God works. He wants to reveal himself. So he chooses the way that connects the dots in your brain. And then he picks a way that maybe influences my heart or my life in a different way. It all comes together to form a beautiful tapestry of love that God has created so that we would be knit together finding in our circumstances, you finding in yours and my, me and mine, that Jesus has brought us together if that's the focus of what we're seeing. And so we need to always not get our focus out of skew, but rather bring it right, zeroed in on Jesus himself and what he is doing in you as he is doing the same in me. It may be from a Picasso point of view, or it may be from a modern art, but he's working in you, and he's working in me, and he's working on you, and he's working on me, and he's working on all of us to bring us into the unity of the body of Christ, and that we should be a blessing <laughs> each day, not only to everyone around us, but you know what? When you're happy, you're a blessing to yourself, <laughs> and God loves it, because then you're just a happy camper, and a bouncing beautiful baby boy or girl. <laughs>